Today we're going to continue talking about the relationship between potential and the electric field and we're going to look at it graphically to sort of make some more sense out of everything. So we've already talked about electric field lines and that's what these white lines are. They're, they're lines that tell me the direction of the force on any random particle. Okay, um, and, as, and as we see they, they point in the direction that a ball would roll around these things. That's what an electric field line is. An equipotential on the other hand is a um, it's a line of equal potential. It's kind of nice that that word means exactly what it says. So um, for, for this graph over here what that means um, essentially is that we are at the we're at the same height when we're at an equipotential. So an equipotential line would be sort of here. Everywhere on that line is at the same potential. All the way through. These would be equipotentials. They're all at the same height. Essentially, equipotentials um, look like and act like. Uh, let's see if I get this right. They look like a contour map or a topography map. Okay, so that's the basic setup between the two of them. I've got a better picture to look at. This 3D thing works really well in showing us what positive potential and negative potential look like. Um, and how charges behave around it, but I want to look at how equipotentials and electric field lines behave with respect to each other. So here we have the exact same picture. We have a positive charge, we have a negative charge. Um, I drew the negative thing, I guess. Um, and, and the black lines here are the electric field lines. And the dotted red lines are equipotentials. So, between these two charges, what this means is that everywhere on this dotted line, I have the same potential. And that would be a high potential, something like 30 volts. Let's say 40 volts, just to make things easier. The next one would be 30 volts, this one would be 20 volts, this would be 10 volts. This line here would be 0 volts negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. Okay. So, some of the things we notice is that we have high potential around or close to let's make that a dot, high potential around positive charges, um, low potential around negative charges. That's just how the potentials move. Now these things together, we see that our electric field points from positive voltage or high voltage to negative voltage or lower voltage. Always points from high to low because that's the same thing as saying points from positive to negative, high voltage to low voltage. So E points from high voltage to low voltage. We also note that the electric field lines and equipotentials um, they're perpendicular to each other at all times. The equipotential shows me how the height, how the potential is changing. The electric field lines show me how something would move along that contour. Okay, so electric field lines point from high voltage to low voltage and they're always perpendicular to equipotentials. Uh, this is just a graphical representation.
So the relationships are, are, are getting um, hard to deal with. Okay, so I've done this in the past and it has been helpful. So if we start off with force, we remember for electricity, force is KQQ over R squared. Uh, the first thing we did was take that force uh, and do it per unit charge. And that gave me the electric field. And the formula for the electric field was just KQ over R squared. And if we wanted to go back, we would just multiply. Um, then we came over here and we, we talked about potential. And we said potential was KQQ over just R. And we did the same thing. We took our potential and we divided it by charge to get the quantity of, sorry, we took our potential energy and divided it by charge to get our quantity of potential difference or, or voltage. And we see that voltage or potential is equal to KQ over just R. But we did the same thing. It's a very similar operation. This is in units of Newtons per Coulomb. This is in units of Joules per Coulomb. Now, an interesting thing to go between these two, I know that force is equal to potential energy U divided by a radius. The other way that we've said that before is that work is equal to a distance R times a force. Either of those things will get you there. Well, we have that same relationship between the electric field and voltage. The electric field is equal to the change in voltage over the change in radius or the change in distance that we have. Or we could say that voltage is equal to um, a distance, delta R, times my electric field. Both of those things will get me there. Now, uh, this relationship is tricky because we talk a lot about a lot of different things um, when we say potential energy. For us, we need to remember that work is going to change my potential energy. And so in terms of voltage, that's going to make work equal to Q times a change in voltage. That's how we're going to look at work here. If I, if I take this charge Q and move it through a change in voltage, delta V, uh, it requires work to do so. Uh, if we go back and look at the last slide, it requires work to move from equipotential line to equipotential line. I'm climbing up. A ladder. This is how we're going to figure out that work. Um, this is just one worth extra repeating. Okay, so going back to this drawing, um, and, and let's let's get a quick reminder of what everything is. We said this was 40, this was 30, 20, 10 volts, 0 volts, uh, and we'll go negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. And, and let's just say that it's not even big. Let's say this distance here is about 1 meter. Let's look at what we can figure out from that. So let's say we've got point A over here, and we've got point B right there. The first thing I want to look at is what is the change in voltage between point A and point B. Well, point A is at 20 volts, point B is at negative 20 volts. So going from A to B, the change in voltage, that's the voltage at B minus the voltage at A. It's a very straightforward thing. So negative 20 volts minus 20 volts. The change in voltage between those two points is negative 40 volts. What that means is that I lost in moving from A to B 40 volts of potential. If I wanted to know the work required, work to move a charge positive Q from A to B, 
work would be that charge Q times the change in voltage from A to B. Well, we already found that change in voltage, 40 volts, so the work would be just Q times negative 40 volts. So that work would come out to B negative. Now let's think about that. You're moving it from here, well sorry, you're moving it from here down, you're losing potential to B. That positive charge naturally wants to move from A to B. Now, do I have to follow this path to do that much work? Or, or, or could I go straight there? Or could I go from A all the way over to here? And then back to B? Well, it turns out either way we do that, it's the same change in potential. This works exactly like gravitational potential energy. All that matters is the difference between my starting point and my ending point. Now, the other thing that we can do that's interesting, I think, um, is estimating the electric field. Estimate the electric field at this point, we'll call it P. Try to find the electric field at point P. Now what we can do with that from this graph uh, and, and that little information about our distance is, is go, well, I know the electric field is roughly the change in voltage over my change in distance. Or we can say delta X, I guess that's a little bit easier. Change in voltage over delta X. So if we look at this point, between here and here roughly is two meters. That's where that point is, right? Roughly two meters. And then the change in voltage between those two points, well, that's 20, that's negative 20. We already know that that's negative uh, 40 volts. And so the electric field there comes out to be 20 volts per meter. Now this takes a little bit to get it in the right units, but it's 20 uh, joules per coulomb per meter, which is 20 newtons per meter per coulomb per meter. And these meters go away, and I'm left with 20 newtons per coulomb. Now this negative sign here is all about direction. We don't have to worry about that because we know the direction points from positive to negative. So that's 20 newtons per coulomb pointing down the hill. So these are some things that we can do with equipotential lines and some of those relationships that we just talked about.